You guys are most likely familiar with the history of planet Earth and how it was formed and how the moon next to it was formed. It is believed that about 4.5 billion years ago, a large planet by the name of Theia crashed into Earth that turned the planet into a huge fireball and it also created the moon. This era is called the Hadean era because it was literally like the underworld or a hell. There is lava everywhere and the average temperature of the planet is 2000 degrees Celsius. It stays like this for tens of millions of years but the earth is slowly cooling off and it is after this era that you'll find water on this planet. But what does that even mean? What is water and where did it come from? How can a hellhole turn into a beautiful planet with oceans everywhere? We all know that right now more than 70% of the planet is covered with water. But back in the day it was completely different. Because how could water land on a hellhole piece of earth and not evaporate? You have to know that water is not a rare thing in the solar system. Like for example, if you look at the Europa moon around Jupiter, it is a quarter the size of planet Earth. But it has twice the water we have. But the water is not like planet Earth. It is under a thick sheet of ice. And maybe in these under ice oceans, there might be life. And this shows us that water is not unique to only Earth. But to completely understand where all this water came from, we have to turn back the clock and get to a place where the solar system doesn't exist yet. About 5 billion years ago, the solar system was basically a nebula. The nebula is the guts of a dead star that's filled with gas and debris. But slowly over time, all this gas and debris form a star and that star is our sun. When this young star is born, it's kind of a bully and its gravity starts spinning all that gas that the nebula left behind around it. And when you add hundreds of millions of years, all this gas and debris will finally form different types of planets. When a star is like this, it is called the proplanetary disk. Basically, there's a star in the middle and a whole lot of gas and debris spinning around it. But in this era, planets forming from this debris and gas is inevitable. The planets that are formed after this era are mostly gaseous planets. And you could see in the solar system as well. The most massive planets we have are gaseous planets like Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune and some smaller rocky planet like Earth. Where planet Earth was formed, there was a whole lot of iron and silicate. And after this is mixed with a whole lot of gas, a rocky planet is formed. And that rocky planet is Earth. When planet Earth was formed, between all that iron and silicate, there was a whole lot of oxygen and hydrogen as well. Elements that you can make water with, H2O. But it's not like they were fused together to make up water. Most of the hydrogen faded away into space because it's so light and the oxygen got mixed with other elements, causing oxides to form. The most common element on planet Earth is oxygen, but just like we said, it's not in the form of gas. It is a form of oxide, like iron oxide, titanium oxide, and many, many other things. So you can't use this oxygen to mix with hydrogen and create H2O, aka water. So where the hell did the water come from? All of it came from the skies, literally. In the solar system, there's a whole lot of asteroids. And back in the day, in this era, there was a whole lot more asteroids. And right now, we have the asteroid belt, which is after Mars and before Jupiter. Between all the asteroids that were around the solar system, including now, one of them is called the chondrite. In simple term, a chondrite is an asteroid that has water in it. But it's not like it's like a jug of water or a water container that has literally liquid water in it. No, on these rocks, there are minerals, minerals that make up water. There are three main ones that have H2O in them. Serpentine, chlorite, and smectite. But these rocks don't look like they have water in them. That is correct, because you can only pull out the water when you cook them. When it cooks, the water will spill out of it. And in this era, how does the earth look like? It is in the Hadeon era, which is like a hell, and it has an average temperature of 2000 degrees Celsius. So any asteroid that crashes into it, it will get cooked. 
including the ones that have H2O in them. The water causes the earth to pile up and it actually helps cool it. You might say, how does the water not evaporate? We will explain it in a little bit, but it has to do with the pressure of the atmosphere at this time. And you have to know that this took millions and tens of millions of years. This wasn't something that happened in a few centuries. But at this time, time doesn't mean anything. There is no living being to experience time. So it could take hundreds of millions of years and no one would care because no one exists yet. A lot of times time has no meaning. Like for example, before you were born, time didn't mean anything because thousands of battles were fought where you were born, before you were born and you have no imagination on how long everything took. It is better not to be able to imagine such thing because it might turn you crazy. The main reason that the water would not evaporate on planet Earth, even though it was 2000 degrees everywhere, is because of the pressure of the atmosphere. In our atmosphere in that era, there was a whole lot more carbon dioxide. And because of the density, the air pressure on Earth would be much, much higher. When you have higher air pressure, that means it needs a lot more heat for you to evaporate water or basically boil the water. In that era, you would at least need 270 degrees Celsius to boil water, which is a lot more than the 100 degrees we're used to. You could also test the opposite version. If you go on top of Mount Everest, the highest point on planet Earth, you can boil water in about 60 degrees Celsius. So that was the main reason why all the water would not evaporate and a lot of it stayed cooling off the planet and creating oceans after hundreds of millions of years. Another thing is that water is always being recycled. You might have heard that the water the dinosaur drink is the same water we drink. So it's never like we're getting new water from a magic place because it's always going through recycle. And it's very important to keep this water clean and not ruin it. Another thing that happens about 250 million years ago is that there was so much cloud and condensation that it starts to rain and it does not stop for 2 million years. If you'd like to know more about this time, we have made a previous video about how it rained for 2 million years and it got the planet ready for dinosaurs. <laughs>